Bosphorus fans, Earl at TheLogBook.com. We're back to the Atari Home Computers for the first time in quite a long time to play a simple game of Pac-Man. I mean, why not? This is, uh, I mean, really, this was kind of the gold standard of your classic video game systems was could it actually play a decent game of Pac-Man. Now, the Atari Home Computers had a closer, a much better chance, let's say, of approximating the graphics of Pac-Man with its better resolution and, you know, sort of finer grain that it could give to the characters and mazes and so on. And, you know, Pac-Man is not exactly a graphically sophisticated game, but the 2600 version, um, I'm going to be kind and say it didn't meet expectations. And uh, this one looks quite a bit better. Certainly sounds better. Pretty smooth control. Everything looks and sounds reasonably close to how it should. You know, allowing for the switch from a vertical arcade display to the more uh, horizontally oriented TV display of a home computer system. Blinky got me. Oh, Blinky. How dare you. Oh, yeah. There we go. Come on up here, guys. Let's do it again. Busto. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to let all the monsters get out. And follow me around for a bit. Hey, dudes. Come on. Oh, let's not and say we did. Missed my strawberry. All right. Well,
Fortunately, I got an extra Pac-Man somewhere in the proceedings. And I crossed uh, the 10,000 point threshold. Now oh, that strawberry is the death of me. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, a very, very good translation of Pac-Man. Much better, much better version of it than the 2600. But, of course, since the 2600 had achieved such market penetration thanks to Space Invaders, um, that became sort of the blessing and the curse because... There was no way the marketing push could be shifted to the computer systems. Or to the 5200. Uh, the 5200 version, I believe, is substantially similar to this one. Maybe we should play it. Pac-Man, you had to go do it, didn't you? Mainly because I told you to. Let's just go back the way we came. <laughs> hey, everybody, follow me. Can I do it? Can I do it? Oh, yes, I can. Now, you go get reconstituted there. Clear out those dots. Y'all follow me. Yeah. Heck with it. Let's just clear the maze. See what happens. We get another maze. That's what happens. Like I don't know that after 40 years. Woohoo! Strawberry! You want some of this, Pinky? You want some of this? Come get it. Who else wants some? Okay, bad time to ask. Now everybody wants some. Oh, come back here. You don't.
Okay, now I have a problem. Namely, I'm dead. I wonder if it has the intermissions. Let's find out. Yes! Another thing that the uh, 2600 version obviously didn't have. I mean, come on. <laughs> the 2600 version sounded like a touch-tone phone and didn't even have actual uh, music. And the funny thing, and I should play this sometime, is there is a fan-made version of Pac-Man for the 2600 that is much better than the version that Atari released, but Atari wanted to keep costs down, and so it enforced Todd Fry a you know fairly strict limit on the amount of memory he could use. Which is how we wound up with you know, a game that sounds like it's a touchstone phone instead of something with music. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Alas, poor Pac-Man. I knew him well. I cannot believe that this game is now... And not this version of it. But the game concept itself. Pac-Man as an overall thing is 40 years old. That means, sadly, I'm even older. That's the real tragedy of it. Pace is definitely picking up. They got me. Alas, poor Pac-Man, but he fared much better on the Atari home computers than he did on the 2600.